rising star Jackie Guetta, an actress, a comedian with a lot of self confidence. I am who I am. Love me or leave me. She's losing weight. I've done the shakes, I've done the pills, I've done the shots. Even just talking about it, I should be burning calories. <laughs> and encouraging others. There's not just one standard of beauty. Jessie still hates looking in the mirror. I don't know what I see. Secrets to loving yourself before losing weight. If you focus on what you got and what you can do, go live it. That's what's coming up right now. Thank you so much for joining us today. You know, our first guest has broken down barriers and stereotypes in Hollywood and has never let anything hold her back. I want you to take a look at this. Comedian, actress, author, designer, and public speaker, Jackie Guetta has parlayed her high-voltage personality into an impressive roster of film and television credits. Most notably, she is the first Latina ever to star in her own network sitcom, First Time Out. She also co-starred with Jennifer Lopez in Selena. Many film projects followed, including Picking Up the Pieces and Eat Your Heart Out. But it wasn't long before Jackie was lured back to the small screen by the series American Family. And in 2003, Guetta became the new host of the Style Network's You're Invited. Oh, Martha Stewart. Oh, totally different. <laughs> and of the do-it-yourself network show, Jewelry Making, showcasing her own personal passion for jewelry design. Hi, I'm Jackie Guerra. Welcome to my studio. Born and raised in California, Jackie began her career as a union organizer and political activist. Today, Jackie is a tireless advocate for women's issues and the Latino community. Jackie Gatta's confidence and unique style have made her a rising star with no boundaries. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jackie Gatta to the show. Welcome up. Thank you. Oh my goodness, how are you doing? Look at you, girl. <laughs> See, a lot of people don't know this, but um, can we say a number? Is there a number that we're working at right you now? You know, the number is 93. And what does that mean? Wait, don't even plug. They don't know what that means. What's that mean? Now, let's see. About, what was it, four months ago, five months ago? Five months ago, I was sitting in a restaurant in Los Angeles talking to her, and she was 93 pounds heavier than she is right this second. We're talking about loving yourself today, and that's why I asked Jackie to be here. We're talking about loving yourself today, and I mean, I wanted you to be here because you've been through a lot. Has, has loving yourself ever been a problem for you? Um, <laughs> well, yes and no. I mean, I definitely, as you know, mm -hmm. suffer from high self-esteem. Like, mm -hmm. Even as a kid, you know, always, I, I don't know what exactly the, the reason that I've always, you know, found the confidence within myself, but... You know, confidence and self-esteem, it's not something that you can go buy at a store or somebody can give you or you can spray on like my tan. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> okay. Just giving away secrets. It's something that you work on every day and I work on it every single day. Every day I get up and I, you know, I find a reason to believe in myself. I find a reason to keep going. There's something your mother told you, right? When you were younger, she said when you walk in a room, what is that little saying? My mother told me that when you walk into a room, you walk into a room like you are the biggest star in the world, and she loved Elvis Presley. So she used to tell me, you walk into a room like you are Elvis Presley. You know, you walk into the room like you are the biggest star the world has ever known. Like, you matter. People would die to get a drop of your, your sweat on them. You know, you got to walk in like you're something. Because the, the opposite of that is if you act like you don't matter, you're a loser, well, then guess what? You are. And let's talk, let's back up for a second, because, you know, in, in the last I was 20 years of your life, 20 <laughs> 20, I mean, you've struggled with your weight. Sure. And let's, let's go back and talk about it for a second. Okay. It, I thought it very funny. Both of your parents, your father was, was what, an exercise workout holic? Yeah, uh, loves diet. to work out. Mr. Jock. Thin as he could be. Mm-hmm. Your mom. Super fit. Playboy bunny. Playboy. Mm -hmm. Thin as she could be. Yeah. So but, naturally, <laughs> look what they got. <laughs> so they Put it on again. <laughs> and, you know, they put it all together. I'm sure they were thrilled. <laughs> by the time, by the time, by the time you 
four one five six four five. Yeah, I mean, my mother put me on my first diet monto when I was eight years old. But here's the craziness: is that we're Mexican. And in the Mexican American community, and I know that you know this too. Come on, give it up because it's all Tell about them, the big boobs, the big hair, the big butt, the big thighs, big is beautiful, right? Correct. So I thought I had it going on, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> well, I do got it going on, but you know what I'm saying. Of course you do. Yes. But as a kid, you know. I'd go visit relatives in Mexico, and I was like a supermodel. I'd walk down the street, and all I'd hear is, Gordita buena, mamita. And I'd be like, what? Hey, what's that? Yeah, you know? <laughs> Hola. <laughs> and, um, you know, and then I would come home, and I, I didn't understand that there was this whole world out there that didn't think big was beautiful. I come from a long line of big bone people. I fit right in, you know. Mm -hmm. And when I was in dance class, when I was about 12 years old, I was in dance class, and my teacher <laughs> announces in front of the entire class, she's like, you got thunder thighs. And I was like, I know! And it's great! And it's great! And my friend Penny was like, um, that's not a compliment. And I'm like, <laughs> yes it is. She's saying I have big, powerful thighs, you know? Because I grew up hearing, oh, you can wear that miniskirt, girl, because you got big thighs, you know? And so I was like, no, it's a total compliment. And my friend's like, no, she's saying you're fat. Like, you know, thunder thighs, lardo, jelly belly. I'm like, oh, so that's a bad thing. You know, I mean, I honestly, honestly thought that I was so cool and so big and powerful. And then when I heard, heard fat with that face, then I started to get the message that, okay, well, maybe this is something I need to look at. And my mother took control because she had her own issues. She was, my mother was very definitely anorexic. Mm. And, you know, we didn't know that word then, but we knew that she was an obsessive dieter. And she took me to my first diet doctor when I was eight years old. And it's just been a thing ever since. But since eight years old, and you have kind of... So that's been what, like 15, 16 yeah, years? Yeah, about 12 years ago, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so 12 years ago when yeah, you went right, there, right, you've been chasing diets, you chased <laughs> diets for a while. Absolutely. Talk I mean. The truth is, is that you name a diet, I've done it. <clears throat> I mean, I have done it all. I've done the shakes, I've done the pills, I've done the shots, I've done the starvation, I've done the cabbage soup diet, which, by the way, not only was I fat, I was stinky. You know, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I've done the prepackaged foods where you walk around with your bag of shame. I mean, I've done it all. And guess what? All diets work, but they don't last. And for me, I had to find another another solution you know I've done the nutritionists I've done the trainers the Pilates the Taibo the hiking the walking the swimming the da 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 you know I mean even just talking about it, I should be burning calories <laughs> <laughs> but now you, well, I'll tell you, let's take a break when we come back we'll find out where part of the answer was but okay. I think let's go back even further because when you were sitting there talking about it yeah it took someone to insult you yeah to take that home mm -hmm. but that big personality has been part of who you are Oh, yeah. And nobody could take that away, no matter what your size is. Mm -hmm. All right, so today we're talking, we're going to have some people who are here on the show today, some young ladies who have been who have been struggling with their weight, but also been struggling with just identity and self-esteem, mm -hmm. and they need a big dose of Jackie. So we're going to take a break. We'll I talk guess. more to her with her. We'll be back in a second. I'm in the makeup trailer and I see Fancy Pants French makeup artist, and he's speaking French to his assistant, and I speak French. So I'm listening and I hear him say, I'm not going to do her. I'm only doing the pretty girls. And I was like, oh, no, you did not. Oh, oh. I saw how the world looked at me. It made me realize that I needed to lose the weight. For the simple fact, really, the main reason is I have a daughter that I want to live for. I hope that when my daughter grows up, she doesn't face the issues that I have in my life.
Are you a young teen girl who doesn't have a weight problem, but who is constantly teased, harassed, or bullied because of the way you look? If so, call us at 1-800-MONTEL-2. That's 1-800-MONTEL-2. Play it. Well, we're here talking with actress Jackie Guerra. Whoa, you get me hot get when you say it like that. <laughs> Today about the importance of loving yourself. And I mean, let's talk about it. Loving yourself. Now, you know, and I said this, the first thing, I, I feel bad, because the first thing out of my mouth was that I sat down to talk to you four months ago, and four months ago, that 93 made a difference. And but I was fine back then. I'm going to tell you, as, as fine <laughs> as you are today, baby, without a doubt. I mean, it, your personality is far, that's terrible to say, far bigger than you. Bigger? Yeah, I mean, I'm just a big girl. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I got a big laugh, a big personality, a big, you know. I think that... But now back up, because when you were in school, mm -hmm. a lot of people would make attempt to tease you. Mm -hmm. And I've had other people sitting in this same chair. And I'm telling you, life devastated. Mm -hmm. Completely devastated. Now, mm -hmm. why were you able to deal with... Let's I'll ask a question this way. How could you deal with all the pressure from outside and still, boom, be here, sitting here the way you are today. As full of confidence as you are, has nothing to do with your weight, weight loss or anything. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? You know, I think it was a very deliberate choice. I watched people, I mean, I, can, I have very vivid memories of things like being, you know, in school, in elementary school, in junior high school, and seeing like the people who were self-conscious about their braces or who had a zit or who wore glasses or whatever, just be completely destroyed, mm -hmm. you know, and I just, at a certain point in my life, I mean, my mother always telling me, you know, act like Elvis, walk into a room, like, you matter, like, you're something, you know, that com um, coupled with seeing people being destroyed, I just made a decision early on in my life, I'm like, you know what, I am who I am, love me or leave me, you got something to say about me, you want to spend your life talking about me, laughing at me, well, then I feel sorry for you that your life is so empty that the only way you can fill it is to talk smack about me. And if it gives you something to do, God bless. There you Adelante, go. comandante. There you, there you go. go. There you go. So, talk about, you know, okay. But I'm, it wasn't all good times. I don't want to paint this picture because, I mean, and you and I had talked sure. briefly about this. I mean, you know, it's very... Um, mean in my opinion to say to people like oh you got to love yourself and you got to be confident and you got to do all this stuff because how do you get there that's the thing it's like you can't just say do it you got to how do you get there so and especially when you have society beating you down oh every my step God. along the way give me a break if i paid attention to everything society said to me i'd be curled up in the fetal position on my couch at home i mean i would never leave my house how many movies it, have you done so far i've done five